is being in a situation where uh, help isn't readily available to you. Communication, I think, is the is the key to making sure that people don't get complacent. They don't get, you know, I don't want to use the word lazy, but it's more about I've done this so many times and nothing bad has ever happened to me. It's certainly not going to happen to me tonight. I was working on propane safety. When I was doing some research on that, I heard that one of our members in security had actually died alone, when working alone, and it was to do with propane. A lot of the time here in the theater, you know, it's I'm by myself painting or fixing lights. You know, generally we are in before a client setting things up. An example would be the greens, de greens department. Quite often they go right into the bush. Quite often the guy will be by himself. He's pulling out a chainsaw. And for the production assistants, I should say a lot of young people. So now you've got new workers, new and young workers, working in isolation or working alone. We all work alone. We're all alone at some time. The real difference is uh, the risk factor. Clearly, if you're in a, in like a roadhouse type of situation, you've got different shows coming in every night and, and you've just done a long run and everybody wants to get out of there after a long, hard day. But you know you've got another group coming in in the morning and there's a bunch of refocusing on the lights. And I've been up that ladder hundreds of times, even today, if not thousands in my career. So I don't even think about it and I just fly up to the top of that ladder. If you're working on lighting fixtures in the air, you never know what might happen. someone around to see how you're doing right but if you haven't checked in and said where you're going what you're doing again you could be laying there forever those are things that could happen and how do we deal with that when they do cell phones make answering the question so much easier you have a cell phone you phone whoever is the designate or you have a check-in system It's so easy to send a text message off to somebody just checking in every you know, hour or whatnot. It's just a matter of setting up who is the person you're going to contact via cell phone. Hey, I'm going to be doing this. Should take X amount of time. I'll contact you when I'm done. The other option is to have the supervisor call in to the, the employee and say, hey, just phoning in, making sure you're okay. Ultimately, it's the employer's responsibility for a safe work environment. It is their responsibility for everybody under them that is a paid employee or even a volunteer. You have to supply them with a healthy and safe work environment and having a work alone plan is part of that, that responsibility. The key is, is first to understand what are the, the risks. So you look at the level of, of uh, isolation or working alone, then you look at your level of risk. If there's a high level of injury, then the response time has to be much quicker than if you're just sitting in a car in a parking lot. I think you have to regularly review your, your procedure. The daily toolbox meetings that we have with the crew at the start of a shift is really um, probably the front line of that because you can bring any changes that have happened up with the crew every day. If the employees and the supervisors and the employer work together to create the plan in the first place, then you've got more buy-in on their part, they're more involved. The awareness is, is quite new, so um, and that certainly is my goal to you know to help bring this forward. If we can uh, engage the crew to be to behave more like a crew as opposed to a bunch of individuals, then we can remove that cowboy. Ah, don't worry about it; it'll be fine. Kind of attitude, um, and we're working on it, and it's and it's getting better.